Hi everyone, welcome to another Team USA Liberty Mutual Google Plus Hangout. I am Lisa Costantini, a writer for TeamUSA.org, and I'm here with a special guest. We have a three-time Olympian, uh, Erin Hamlin, and uh, let me start it off and let Erin uh, introduce herself quickly. Hi, I'm Erin Hamlin. I'm on the US Luge team, and I am right now I'm in Munich at Team Processing for the Olympics, which is really exciting. All right, so we're going to be here talking about Sochi 2014. We're only a couple days away. And if you have any questions, you can tweet them to Ask Team USA. And um, let me, I guess, start off. Thank you, Aaron, for joining us. I know it's a little later in the day for you than it is here for us in the US. Can you tell us where are you? Um, like I said, I'm in Munich, Germany. So yeah, about six hours ahead of the East Coast. So it's definitely an early morning for everyone there. Um, I. Right now I'm in a big warehouse that we're getting all of our awesome team gear. So it's, it's a good day. It's like Christmas in January for, for <laughs> athletes. So it's, it's re really exciting. We can see a couple of mannequins and stuff behind your shoulders there with some oh, of the yep. clothes. So that's very yep. cool. All it's, right. It's definitely a cool process. Okay. Well, congratulations on making your third Olympics. Can you tell us for maybe someone who's never going to get to walk on that field and be down there for that opening ceremony. What is it like to, to be there and to know that you're among the best in the world? It's a pretty amazing experience. You know, this will be my third games, but it's not any less exciting. I think almost it's more more exciting because I know what to expect and I know how to make it even more fun. Um, being able to be part of Team USA is pretty cool. You know, I race in an individual sport, so I don't always get that like team camaraderie feel. Um, but when you kind of band together and everyone's in the the opening ceremonies gear and coming into the stadium for, you know, under the American flag, it's it's pretty uh, it's hard to describe. You know, everyone's really excited, even if it's not your your home crowd. But um, people love seeing Team USA and um, being able to represent not only my sport, my family, um, or my hometown, but even the entire country. You know, I know there's so many people back home cheering for me, and and it's so exciting and it's such a fun event. Um, how did you get started in luge? Can you maybe explain to someone the difference between bobsled, luge, um, skeleton? Yeah, so luge, I go feet first down an ice track. Bobsled, luge, and skeleton all share the same um, venue, but we are very different. Um, luge, actually, we've been coined as the fastest sport on ice. The men do hit higher, higher speeds. Um, I think the easiest thing to, to distinguish us is I'm by myself on a sled on my back, whereas skeleton is head first and bobsled, they're all inside of a sled. Um, I attended a USA Luge slider search in um, the summer of 1999. Um, they do these clinics where they introduce kids to the sport. They put like rollerblade wheels on really basic sleds and see if kids show potential. And from there, they get invited to go to Lake Placid where they slide on ice for real and then kind of just get pulled into the development system. And so I did that when I was 12 years old and 14 years later I am still doing it and going to my third Olympics which is pretty unbelievable but it's been a great experience. 12 seems like such a young age to be you know, trying to achieve these crazy speeds and be going down an icy track. I mean how is that safe? How do you ensure your safety especially knowing that Vancouver, you know, the Georgian diver, Georgian uh, loser was the one that died that year, which is, you know, very sad. And it's just such a scary sport. Like you said, you guys go so fast. Yeah, we do, but it's a pretty um, long learning curve. You know, when I did start when I was 12, the hill that I tried out on was not very steep, and you don't go those high speeds. The first time you go on the ice track, out of maybe, I did it in Lake Placid, so out of 19 curves in Lake Placid, I started at curve 13. So they, it's like a, a slow buildup. So you don't just go right off the top your first run. So I wasn't, the speeds that I hit now, I wasn't going until probably at least four or five years into the sport. Um, so it's a very gradual um, kind of process, as you could say, um, to go those high speeds. And that's why we do start kids so young, because um, experience plays such a huge role in success in luge. So the younger that we start kids, they have that much more time to slowly work their way up to get the, the skills they need to be able to handle the high speed. So by the time you're you know, 18, 19 years old, going the high speeds that we hit now at the elite level, um, you've ha you have like five or six, almost some, some people have even more years under their belt. So it's, 
you know, we, we learn how to handle it before we're just kind of shoved off the top. <laughs> that still seems so young. How, do you ever get afraid? There are definitely times, like at the top of tracks, that maybe I find more difficult or I haven't done so well on, um, that I'll have like moments of, of nerves. But at the same time, we have training. All we train so much that, um, you know, you're, you're prepared. And I know that I've done. I've been down all these tracks before. Um, that's another reason why having a long career is big because experience in all the different tracks makes you more comfortable. So then you have more, or you have less chances to be to be scared. Um, but you know there are times where it's you know it's only human to be a little nervous and a lot of times it's nerves because you want to be able to do well um, at the same time as maybe nerves about like crashing or hitting walls but um, it's, it's something that I've gotten used to. My body and my brain have adapted to going down tracks at 85 miles an hour which is kind of odd but <laughs> believe it or not you do you do get used to it. <laughs> Well, I know I've talked to you in the past, and you had mentioned to me that the track in Sochi is a little different because it's going to make it very hard to go fast. Do you adjust your training for that, or what do you do to try to overcome that? I think the, the biggest thing is paying attention to really small details. It's relatively easy to get down the track there, um, so, you know, that's not a track I would sit at the top being like, oh, no, I hope I make it down safe. Like, that would never happen. Um, there are really, the, the, the way it's built, the curve set up and everything is very open and kind of sweeping turn, so it's pretty forgiving in that sense, but all the tiny details, having perfect position, making zero mistakes, and making sure your equipment is dialed in so perfectly, um, those are things that all are, are going to matter huge because that's what's going to make us go fast, um, and obviously we want to we go the fastest, so... Keeping um, keeping tabs on all of that stuff, um, which can be a really big pain. Um, those are the things that are going to make the difference. It seems like being a professional athlete, there's so many ups and downs. Can you tell us about maybe a time when you had a setback in your career and how you were able to come back from that? I think my biggest down in my career was probably... Um, right after the Vancouver Games, um, I went into those Olympics as a medal contender. I had just won world championships the season before. The 09-10 season was my best to date. Um, I was on the podium multiple times, and I felt like, you know, it was like a perfect storm of, of things happening for me to have, you know, get on the podium or have a great Olympics. And that did not happen, far from. It was worse than my finish in Torino. So it was very disappointing, and um, it was you know, difficult for me to, to think, to get over the thought that I, you know, wasted that opportunity, and I was like, that was my only chance. Um, after that season, um, our entire staff changed. Um, we got new coaches. Um, we had new equipment ideas and everything, so my strength coach left. Everything kind of was pulled out from under me in a way at the at one time when my career was kind of at a high. So there were they were trying to reset everything to to make the team as a whole improve. Um, but at the same time, I was like, I'm doing okay. You know, things are all right. And after that season, <coughs> excuse me, um, that next season, the 2010-11 year, um, was pretty bad. I started out really good. I medaled in a race, and then. After that, things just progressively deteriorated, and my results started to suffer really bad as I was trying to adapt to new coaches, new um, new kind of mindset of going into competition. And um, I tried really hard to like keep an open mind and everything, and, and that was difficult. Um, so the the next two seasons were my worst to date, and it was really difficult to think um, that I would be able to come back. You know that I could forget about being able to forget about bad results and, and thinking that there is a future for you to do well was probably one of the hardest things, but in the past I have been able to do that pretty well. Um, so I really just kind of, you know, tunnel visioned myself on exactly what I needed to do, and I knew I had been successful in the past, so I just kind of forgot about everything else and knew that somewhere within myself and my what I was doing, my training, um, I was doing something right because I had been successful before, so I just kind of threw everything else away, you know, started working with my old strength coach again, and slowly, slowly but surely, things have started to crawl back in a positive direction, so it's been a long road, and it's been a very huge learning experience, um, but it's hopefully going to turn out well. So for you, how will um, Sochi be different from Vancouver and Torino? Is it higher stakes, or how are you looking at it? I'm not, I definitely don't see it as higher stakes um, because I've gone into both 
the other past Olympics completely different. You know, the first one I was 19, I was a junior, I wasn't su supposed to make the team, so it was no expectation, all about gaining experience and just kind of, you know, seeing what would happen. Um, there was, I had no pressure on myself at all. Um, Vancouver was totally the opposite. You know, I was the, the hopes and dreams of USA Luge was, were on my shoulders going into those games and um, I had huge a huge target on my back as the reigning world champion and it was kind of polar opposite from Torino. And now I think I'm kind of cruising in somewhere in the middle. Um, I definitely have history of, of successful results, um, but in the past couple of seasons I've just barely creeped back into top tens all year. So I've been working for that consistency. Um, so that's come back a little bit. Um, but I do know that I can be fast. I have the speed. So the confidence is still there for me. Um, may not it may not be something other people will look at me and say, oh, that's definitely a medal contender because my results in the past four years don't say that, but um, I know that I can be. So I think um, being able to have that confidence, it's, it's kind of like a, how can I explain it? It's like comforting to have that experience and the knowledge of that, but at the same time, no pressure because it's not like I'm looked at to, to do something great, um, but I'm hoping I do. <laughs> Uh, and I also, like, I've learned to just be able to enjoy it, you know, go and enjoy the experience and really live in the moment and take everything in, um, and it makes it so much more worth it when you can really do that. Well, speaking about pressure, I've got a really good friend who lives in New Hartford, New York, and everyone <laughs> there is huge Aaron Fam Hamlin fans, and they're all cheering for you. Is that a lot of pressure? Because that's 30 minutes from the small town where you grew up in New York, and I just feel like that's so many people that feel like they know you and are behind you and are rooting for you, but that's kind of a lot for you. Is that hard? It is a lot, and it's amazing to see how many people from Central New York have kind of rallied around Luge and myself, and it's awesome. And I think, not necessarily pressure, but um, I love seeing that excitement. And yeah, I really want to do well and, and bring home a medal so everybody can celebrate it with me. And I think I put more pressure on myself because of it than they do. Um, I know I've been getting videos and messages from home for the past week or two, and it's been amazing, and um, it makes it really fun, and, and I know they will celebrate just as hard if I get last as if I get first, so they make sure to tell me how proud they are, and it doesn't matter what I come home with, but I think I put more pressure on myself to perform well for them, um, but it is awesome to see, and it's great to to see so many people get involved in the whole Olympic ideal and the whole Olympic movement, and they're so pumped about it. And all like the whole school at home has made videos and everything, and, and it's been really cool. Um, and I appreciate it more than anything, and it makes it more exciting for me to go. What are you hoping to come away with after Sochi? Obviously, some hardware would be great to come home with. Um, we have the new team relay that I think we have a really good shot in. We finished third overall this season, so we were only five points out of second. Um, Canada just barely got in there. But uh, I think we have a good shot in that as well. If, if all parts of the relay, if we all have great runs, um, we can definitely contend for a medal there. Um, but yeah, as, a, in, in, as an individual, um, I would also love to, to get back on that podium. It would be great to come back after two seasons of not on it to come back at the games. But um, if I have four solid runs and I know I went as fast as I could and I laid it all out there, um, I will be happy and I'll be satisfied with that. What are you most looking forward to in Sochi? There... I think um, I'm really excited to race. Um, in the past, you know, I've been excited to experience the games, opening ceremonies and everything, but I think since I have done the whole Olympic thing a couple of times now, the, the competition side of it for me is really exciting this time. Um, it is a very new track for everybody. Obviously, the Russians have been on it a ton, so they have a little bit of, of an advantage, but it's kind of one of the biggest level playing fields we've had in a while. Um, because we're all pretty, um, we're all very new to the track, so it'll be interesting to see how how that pans out. But other than that, um, over the years, you know, you get to know a lot of other athletes. So I'm really excited to go to different events and cheer them on as well. Any event in particular? Any athlete in particular you're really looking forward to seeing? Um, well, I train a lot with other sliding sports, so bobsled and skeleton. Um, I know um, all the athletes pretty well, so it'll be fun to see them compete. Um, some of the the freestyle skiing. Um, I'm really bummed the slope style events are the same day as mine, so I won't be able to catch that, which I was excited about. But um, other than that, you know, uh, I think I don't even know anything. I, I would love to go to all the events, but that makes it very stressful if you try and go to too much. So we'll see what, what works out with the schedule. 
Do you, um, if you could compete in another sport, is there any other either winter or summer Olympic sport that you would love to have tried to go go at? Um, I grew up doing gymnastics, so if I could have been a gymnast, that would have been you know a lifelong dream. But um, I was way too tall for that, so that was out of the question very soon. Um, I think I would love to be a skier now that. Uh, there's a lot of skiing events in the games. That would be great. I ski as well, but um, I like my sport, so I'm 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 definitely okay with it. Uh, but yeah, that's. I think I might try bobsled at some point, but I don't think I'll ever do it competitively. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, how do you think Team USA, as a whole, is going to do in in your sport and maybe you know bobsled and skeleton some of the other ones? I am excited to see what what pans out for Luge at the games. The team event is going to be really exciting, and like I said, you know we have a really good shot, um, and it's really exciting to kind of get together with my teammates as, as Team USA. Hopefully, I'll be on the relay. Um, we'll find out after the races, but um, I think sliding sports, um, bobs and skeletons seem to be taking over the world lately. So I, it'll be exciting to see them to see them race. Um, they've all been pretty dominant this season, so. Um, other than that, I think Team USA as a whole, um, I, I've read and heard places that we're sending our biggest team ever, um, and I think it'll it'll make some statements. I'm really excited, and it'll be great to to stay on top of that medal count. Is it hard for, for you athletes to get this attention, you know, every four years and have the international attention and so many people looking at you, and then be weird, or do you miss it when it goes away? I definitely wouldn't say that I would miss it when, or that I do miss it when it goes away. It's it's fun. I think it makes us appreciate it a little bit more that we never really get too much um, attention outside of the games. But um, you know, our seasons are the same whether it's an Olympic year or not. We still compete from October through March, um, so we're pretty busy a lot. And um, you know, it it is always nice to get to see people um, that get into the sport. And I think. I think more people would like it um, if it was if they had more access to it, which is tough being in, in the U.S. Um, but you know, I think it makes it really exciting for us, and it makes it special. Um, if we had the same, you know, media attention year round every other year, I think we would get more sick of it than than anything else. But um, because we do have this influx of people, and it's kind of like introducing our sport to new people every time, and and people do seem to get excited about it, which is fun. And um, so I don't know, I. It's a lot of fun to to have a lot of, a lot going on Olympic years, um, but I I don't feel like I'm I'm missing any anything when I'm outside of that. Well, you you talked about the luge track and training in the U.S. I mean, how many places in the U.S. can you even train on a track, and how does that affect your training? We only have two tracks in North America, so Park City, Utah, right outside of Salt Lake, and then one in Lake Placid, New York. So I'm based out of Lake Placid. And we actually only have four in all of North America. There's one in Calgary as well as one in Whistler. So um, we're definitely behind the the curve on that because there are four tracks that we compete on every year just in Germany. So um, I think that plays a huge part in in just the popularity of the sport and um, how well our teams do as a whole. Um, we are competing with a lot of you know your baseball, your basketball, football. Um, whereas in a smaller country, I think more um, attention is paid to the smaller sports. Um, but at the same time, you know we have great facilities, and when we do host races, they're awesome and they do a really great job. So I'm hoping over the years, our international federation will see how well um, we do host competitions, and hopefully it'll bring more races, which will give us more hopefully coverage. And it's just a very slow process. What would you say to someone who wanted to do what you're doing and maybe get their start in luge? I would definitely encourage them to try it. You know, it's never something I would have imagined that I would be doing. I was a total wimp when I was little, so doing an extreme sport like luge would have never crossed my mind. Um, so keep an open mind. Try something new. Um, you can contact the USA Luge Association, usaluge.org. Always has information on our recruitment process and even getting involved in clubs, so you don't even have to... Um, if you don't want to try out for a team, you just want to try the sport, or you're older and you want to get involved later in life, you can still slide. Um, it's still possible um, if you're in the areas. And there's actually um, a natural track style setup in Michigan, as well as I think they started building these curves at Blue Mountain Resort in Pennsylvania where people can jump on a small kind of for fun sled and, and go down. So it's, it would be a cool intro. Okay. Well, I think that's about all the time we have this morning, but I want to thank you so much for talking with us and we will be watching you, so 
Good luck with everything. Um, so everyone, you. if you want to continue to follow uh, Facebook with Team USA and Liberty Mutual, our Twitter pages, we will be keeping you updated. We've got a couple more hangouts leading up to the games. So stay tuned to that. And um, thanks, everyone, for watching. Thank you, Erin. Good luck. Thank you very much.